Hi everybody, welcome back to the basement. Uh, a lot of people were asking for more technical details on this thing in the uh, comments on part one, so I wanted to go over that stuff. Um, took the cover off. It's pretty simple on the inside. I kind of like the way they made the enclosure. It's very simple. This was probably this was probably three die hits to make this chassis. Um, I screwed the cover back on the side just to give it some stability because it's kind of kind of flexy otherwise. So this motor uh, connected through these planetary gears, the ratio on the gears is 31 to 1. So one turn of the handle gives you 31 revolutions of the motor shaft. Uh, I just verified that by putting a little mark on the end of the shaft and then turning the handle once and counting how many times that mark went around. So the motor itself uh, comes from these people. And what's interesting is I was able to actually find the data sheet for this. And I believe I know where the manufacturer's claim of 20 watts came from. And I think it's right there. Approximate output power. Uh, the one in question is this one I've highlighted in blue down here. So it's alleging 24 volts, a no load speed of 525 RPM, okay, whatever, and a current of 0.1 amp. Now, when you're turning this thing, 64.5 RPM is giving it a motor speed of 2,000 revolutions per minute. So, you know, 64.5 RPM, you could keep that up with your hand. I think that's not an unreasonable time. I don't know exactly how fa <clears throat> I don't know exactly how fast I was turning it, but I think that seems reasonable. Um, people were asking about mods. The first thing I did was I drilled another hole in the shaft and I moved the handle out, you know, about three quarters of an inch because, you know, whacking your knuckles on the edge of a table is, uh, is not good. You don't want to do that more than once. Um, the little circuit board that was inside this thing, get this out of the way, is right here. Very simple, very reasonably straightforward, I guess. Uh, power comes in here from the generator and then goes through a uh, polarity protection diode, a uh, filter capacitor, and then goes to this uh, uh, switching buck regulator the you know the two associated diodes and this is a, this is really pretty standard with a single inductor and an output capacitor um, I don't know what chip this is because it's not marked however I'm going to assume for the sake of argument that it is the most common chip I can find in power supplies from China which is an LM2596 uh, it also happens to come in the package in question, so that uh, that sort of adds to the legitimacy of that claim. Um, one of the interesting things about this design is I find it a little confusing. So in looking at the, app, the, the uh, application circuit, uh, a lot of stuff you see from China, the circuit that they put in it uh, is literally just an exact copy of whatever's in the data sheet, and because that usually works fine. Uh, however, here the component values are, they're not right. I don't know if that's because this isn't an LM2596. It's a similar five pin surface mount regulator, but something just doesn't make sense. So I kind of drew out the schematic uh, for this. Excuse my horribly poor schematic drawing skills. Uh, I was just kind of doodling this to, to see if it made sense. And it is basically the same as the data sheet. Uh, except there's a problem, and it has to do with this inductor. So the inductor is labeled 470, which is 470 microhenries. Uh, I can't take it off to verify that because of the way it's packaged. The, the terminals are actually underneath it. This was, this was reflow soldered. So I can't really determine if that 470 is actually right or if that's, you know, just some random printing that's on there. But according to the LM2596 data sheet, the inductor should be, say we wanted to have 5 volts out, um, we're looking at 33 microhenries. Or if we wanted 9 volts, it would be 22. Or if we wanted... 12 volts, it would be 68, according to the, the table that came with the data sheet for this part. 
Um, I, I don't know if... I, I have a feeling what happened with this is, like so many things from China, it's the perfect storm of cheapness. Uh, you know, everybody's everybody's buddy over there, it seems. And I'm sure that somebody had a surplus of these inductors, and they were cheap. Same reason that the uh, filter and the output capacitor are the same value. Uh, the data sheet also suggests that for something like a 5-volt output, you would probably want a 470 microfarad uh, output capacitor instead of a 220. But it seems that every kit I've ever bought, every piece of electronics I've ever bought, uh, generally just has these 220 microfarad 50 volt capacitors because I imagine it's sort of the alignment of cheap. Um, but anyway, that's that's what's up with that. And I have a feeling that the the incorrect values here may be contributing to uh, the lack of efficiency in this. The uh, It's probably just working too hard to try and charge this inductor up. Um in fact, I mean, it was performing so poorly, I kind of expected like an LM317 kind of arrangement inside this unit because it's just its efficiency is kind of on par with a linear regulator. So, in an attempt to increase the efficiency of this thing, uh, I built a number of power supplies, like this one, and this one, and I tried some pre-made power supplies, and I was not able to really appreciably improve the performance. Um, I think the, the major limiting factor in this device is just the output of the motor itself. Um, <clears throat> it's just not capable of delivering the kind of wattage that we expect uh, with what it's got. I mean, if we come back to the data sheet here, we see that the uh, the nominal uh, power rating, uh, where is it? Yeah, at maximum efficiency, its output as a motor is 9.8 watts. So, I mean, that's not exactly, you know, that's not exactly terribly useful, really. I think the problem comes from it being 24 volt motor and we're trying to run it at, you know, regulated to a much lower voltage, and it's just losing so much in the course of that regulation. <clears throat> As a side note, look how giant the capacitor is on that power supply. It's just what the data sheet called for. So there are a lot better ways we can generate electricity from something like this. You got that. That's a uh, bike from an e- uh, or a motor from an e-bike which I think is output 650 watts, 24 volts DC. So I imagine if we were to give this thing uh, 2,600 revolutions per minute, we'd, we'd get a fair amount of power out of this. And I may chalk that up in something later and figure it out. Um, many years ago, I built a bicycle power generator using this uh, car alternator. This is a Bosch model, um, not a terribly high power one. But it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, you got hot, you've got ground, and you've got um, ch uh, input for uh, getting it started. So that's this is what your alternator light in your car is connected to. So you flow a little bit of current through the windings, and it generates the magnetic field that allows the alternator to turn on. Well, this sucks for that, too, because um, fully a third of the power that you're making is just going into maintaining the magnetic field inside the alternator. So that's that's also kind of not terribly useful either, so we can get that out of the way. Um, I think making this thing useful would require a motor with a lower voltage, higher power rating, or something a little bit more reasonable like a solar panel. If you went with solar, Instead of trying to make it human powered, this is a three and a half watt panel that's got a nominal 12 volt output. This was like four dollars. This is a takeout from some piece of equipment that never came to be, you know, some kind of hazard light or something. And I got these eight lithium cells for free. Good place to look for lithium cells, by the way, is um, medical equipment suppliers. 
because uh, most medical equipment, whether it's in a hospital or if it's for home use, uh, they tend to replace the batteries on a time schedule rather than a when they need them replaced schedule because it absolves them of liability. Uh, you know, you'd hate to have a, a piece of equipment stop working and then there's an inquest and they say, well, when were the batteries last changed? And no one knows. It would be easy to say they were changed in February and we know they were good. Uh, so you can get those really easy. Same thing for like fire suppression equipment or uh, like, you know, automated defibrillators are hanging on the wall in buildings. I mean, you can get you can get really good batteries for really ch for really cheap or free if, if you just, you know, if you keep your eyes open, and you know where to look. Um, where was I going with that? Um, ah, yes, hacks. Um, trying to make this thing better. Uh, number one suggestion is if you look down inside here, I've soldered a uh, one nanofarad capacitor uh, directly across the motor output terminals to try and cut down on some of that interference. I think that helped a little bit. Um, it, it's kind of hard to tell, though. Uh, another thing I would do is the um, the little terminals that are on this thing are just they're just they're just awful. They're these really really are like the push in terminals for like radio antennas or maybe like really really lightweight speakers. Um, I would just cut this thing off of here and you know drill some holes in the enclosure and mount uh, like banana jacks. Because banana jacks are really good. You know, I honestly don't know if banana jacks are called something else in uh, in other countries. But I'm talking about five-way binding posts. I'm trying to look for something around here that has five-way binding posts on it. Well, I guess this does. Um, where you can push in banana jacks or you can squeeze it down on a terminal. Or you can shove a wire through it and squeeze it and, and turn it down. Um, those are really handy. That's really awful. Uh you know, maybe a maybe a cigarette lighter uh, or a cigar lighter, a 12 volt power outlet socket would be nice. Um, just anything other than these awful little spring things; those those have got to go. Um, the USB ports are are, are kind of good. Um, if only the circuitry behind them was able to keep up, but they have the proper resistor dividers across the data lines to let your device know how much power it can consume, which is which is always good. Um, other things that I might do, now I don't know how much of a difference it's necessarily going to make, but one thing you can try doing is you can try putting a ferrite core on the uh, motor leads to try and sort of suck down some of the resistance, or I'm sorry, some of the, the interference that's, that's coming out, that's being conducted out from the motor brushes. So you just put that on there like that and plug it back in. It should be better, I would hope. Um, another thing that you should probably do is replace this output capacitor. Like I said, go with something that's bigger than that or add some, uh, some really low value or really small value. I don't want to say low and high. Really small value uh, ceramic caps across this output too just to try and soak up some of that noise. Um, and this inductor, I think, is a problem. I think if you replaced this with a high current rated inductor closer to the, like, 33 to 68, uh, microhenry range, it would be better. Uh, I don't want to try taking this one off of here because, like I said, it's a surface mount component and all the contacts are underneath, and I would just wreck them trying to get this off. Um... Other things that would be good. Uh, if you are feeling really ambitious, um, get yourself some LM2596s and some breadboard that has uh, surface mount pads for this, or get it in a, like a TO263 package where the leads go through, but it's a lay down like that, and actually make several independent power supply outputs. Because one of the troubles with trying to make uh, something that's controlled by a variable resistor divider like this, which is what this arrangement is over here with these resistors. Um, what's going to happen is there is no magical inductance value that's going to work for all these voltages. It's going to be different for each one. 
So I would say if you found yourself, you know, if you need this on an emergency basis to operate a piece of equipment that takes, you know, let's say like 18 volts or something like that, make a dedicated 18-volt supply that has a power switch that turns it on and off. And if you really, really need this thing to make 5 volts other times, you know, likewise, do the same. Make a power supply that, you know, that all the equations go through to be good for 5 volts. It's definitely a more reasonable way to do things. Uh, trying to make something do everything, and it's like a multi-tool. If you've ever had one of those, you know, fold-out Leatherman-style multi-tools with all the different stuff on it, no multi-tool is ever going to be as good as the individual tools it's trying to replace. Yes, it, they might end up being bigger in the long run, but I, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update on where that was. Um, I think this... I don't know if there's going to be any way really at all to make this good. Uh, it'll, it'll be more of a novelty educational kind of item than anything else. Uh, if there's any uh, tips or suggestions you guys have or that you want to share with uh, viewers... Uh, let me know, and I'll try and follow this up with a part three if I ever figure out anything better. Oh, one thing that is good about this. With the uh, planetary gear set, that's not likely to wear out anytime soon. Um, I've seen plenty of little, you know, handheld, cranky types that they, they include extra gears with it when you buy it. That's never a good sign, because if you're including extra gears with it, that means you know the gears are going to break. So this, the mechanical part of this, I think is quite sound. It's just not really up to what anybody needs out of a device like this. Anyway, thanks for watching.